In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. For he will pluck my feet out of the net. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in, the sh in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his hand. He will lift me high on the rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer his tent sacrifices with shouts of thanksgiving. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Glory, Glory be to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My eyes are ever turned toward the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent, speaking to us this morning, is from the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools, and I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness' sake to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle reading is for the fifth chapter of Ephesians. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered him, you were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. For he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ.
Will you pray with me? May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We have a story that begins with the disciples asking a question they think is an either or. But Jesus tells them both answers are misguided. And then it comes down to the end of the story where Jesus is talking once again with this man who was born blind and Jesus asks him if he believes and the man says who have you ever been talking to somebody that wanted to talk to you but didn't know you were you you were that person And how do you introduce yourself at that point? You know, I would just say, well, that's me. Jesus does something a little bit different, and I've always kind of heard these words as different and as Jesus' words. He says to the man, you have seen him, which this is a new thing for this guy because before that he was blind. So that's a miracle in that. You've seen him. And then he goes on. It is he who is speaking to you. Why does Jesus want to emphasize the fact that he's the one speaking to this man? What's so important about Jesus Speaking. We have other passages of Scripture that tells us faith comes by hearing, hearing the word about Christ. When Christ is speaking the word about himself, he's actually creating faith. This faith that was a bit misguided, I don't know who he is, I don't know how to believe in him, is granted new insight and strength and purpose when Jesus says he is speaking to you. So it is typical of how Jesus works faith through speaking, but I think it's especially important at this time because this is a man who the synagogue is not speaking to. He was a man that had been born blind and had grown up begging for alms outside the synagogue. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think he's been allowed in the synagogue because he was blind, and most people assume the same thing. The disciples said, well, either he did some terrible sin or his parents did that he's in this terrible condition. Stay away. Maybe they would throw him a coin, but speak to him? And then this whole affair comes up with his eyes being opened, and the Pharisees are sure that they want to get Jesus for something, and so they say, well, he, he did this on a Sabbath day. He can't be a true believer. And they call the blind man's parents in. We skipped that part in the reading, and they ask him, how did he get healed? And they say, we don't want anything to do with him. He's old enough. Ask him yourself. Not only had the church rejected him, his own parents put him at a distance. Finally, they say, well, okay, fine. What do you say about this guy? He's a prophet. 
It's never happened before that someone opened the eyes of a man born blind, but this man did. That's it. We can't have any of that. And they cast him out of the synagogue. They excommunicate him. They said, you're no longer a person. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And he went and found him. And he spoke to him. And I think the third reason why Jesus emphasized the fact that he's the one that was speaking to this man, because he is the one who spoke to the man earlier, saying, go and wash, and has anointed his eyes. And that short conversation, I think, was reviewed in this man's head, and he said, that's right, I've heard that voice before. I've heard the voice of Jesus sending me, giving me purpose, giving me life, giving me sight. I believe. His faith overflowed and he worshipped Jesus. What about you and me? Are we ready to listen to Jesus? Listening to Jesus is more important than what door you come in. Many of you had to come in a different door today. It's a trial. <clears throat> what? I got to walk all the way around to the other side? Upstairs? There were so many barriers in this man's way that Jesus broke through them all by speaking to him. That's why God became flesh and dwelt among us so that he might speak his words to us, that he might tell us that he is here for us, that he's come to send us into the world. He's come to wash away our sins. He's come to give us sight. But Jesus also goes on to say something else about that other part of things that were happening on there. He said, for judgment I came into this world so that those who do not see may see and that those who see may become blind. The people that were supposed to see, the people that were in the church, the people that had the word of God that were thinking that they were doing God's work by saying that this man's a sinner and we better keep him away were the ones that were blind to who Jesus was. They were blind to God's word. They were blind to the love of God they were hateful and arrogant and mean. Moving towards darkness. Open your eyes that you might see. Open your ears so that you might hear the voice of Jesus, the voice of God with us. He is the one speaking to you. He is the one putting his name in the water. He is the one giving you his body and blood. He is the one who takes away your sin, who says, you were created so that the works of God might be made known. Remember Jesus' answer early on in the story? Whose sin was it? <clears throat> and he says, neither one. It was not that this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. 
What is this work of God that was displayed in this man? Sure, his eyes were open and that was a miracle. But what was the greater miracle? He believed that Jesus was the Christ and he worshipped him and he had life in his name. He who was lost was found. He who was ignored was heard. He who had been cut off could hear and see. He had life. He was a special creation of God given that place to be set on display as one who God loved. You have ears. You have eyes. You were made by God to be his own precious child. He loves you very much. He would have you believe that he is the Christ and that by believing, you would have life in his name. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And he was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Great Physician, enlighten our eyes by your blessed gospel and hide us in your shelter in the day of trouble. Provide a home in your church for those cast out into this, by this world and unite them with us in the pure confession of your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, your Son abides among His saints in the temple of His church. He speaks today through the word and sacraments. Shelter all those who seek refuge under the cover of His tent and raise up pastors in every age to serve them in Your name. Lord, in Your mercy. Father, through holy baptism, You have brought us into the light of Christ. Guide us always in Your ways and teach us to know your will, that we would do what is good and right and true. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, those who wait for your salvation have the promise that you will not forsake them. Lead those who wander in darkness through rough places, that they would find the way of righteousness and not be put to shame. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, you have promised that what we suffer does not condemn us, but instead displays your glory. Sustain the afflicted in body or soul, that they would take heart to trust, 
you for healing and find you even in the midst of their trials. Lord, we pray that you be with Brian, Lorraine, and Pat, that you would sustain them with your grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, every one who believes in Jesus as Lord will not be put to shame. Unite your people in a right confession of your word and free them from disagreements over your truth. Bring us with penitent hearts to receive the great riches of your Son's body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving your body and blood to eat and drink, you, did, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, your coming for final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every evil. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people is by you. Glory be to the Father and to Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Happy. Uh -huh.